Hello and welcome to this lesson on circle theorems, where I will be showing you all of the theorems that you need to know for your GCSE. So stay tuned. Before we begin, I would like to go through some basic parts of a circle with you. This is called a circumference of a circle. This part here is called a radius. Now what's very important is that the radius touches the circumference and it meets the center of the circle, which is represented by this dot there. If a line goes through the center of the circle and meets on the other side of the circumference, that is known as a diameter. The diameter of a circle is twice as long as the radius. On the other hand, what some students often get confused with is a chord. Now a chord also touches one end of the circle and meets at the other end of the circumference, um, but it doesn't go through the center, you see, and that's why it's called a chord and not a diameter. A diameter, remember, has to go through the center of a circle. Now, when you have a chord, a chord splits up a circle into two parts, which we call segment. This is known as a minor segment, it's a smaller segment, and this is known as a major segment. Now, I will be referring to these parts of a circle. I may also refer to the arc of a circle. So here, this is called a minor arc, and this will be called a major arc, because there's a chord here, and the chord has separated it into two parts on the circumference of a circle. So minor and major arcs are formed. So on to our first circle theorem. Angle at the center is twice the angle at the circumference. So here you have two points, you have two lines that go and meet the center here, and then from those same two points, you have two lines that go and meet at the circumference. And what this theorem says is that the angle here is double the angle there. So for example, if this was 100 degrees, then this angle here will be 50 degrees. Likewise, if this was 60 degrees, then you will double it here and this will be 120 degrees. So here's circle theorem number two, angle in a semicircle is 90 degrees. Now if you will notice that the circle has been divided into two parts by the diameter. Now you have two semicircles right there. So from those uh, points of the diameter, Anything that goes and meets at the circumference will always create 90 degrees. And I will show you that by drawing two other lines. So here and here, that will be 90 degrees. Circle theorem number three. This is actually related to this first theorem, which is angle at the center is twice the angle at the circumference. Um, so what this one is saying is that angles in the same segment, and remember I told you segments are, I'll just get out of the way in case you can't see, segments are, um, the minor segment and the major segments, which are divided by a chord, okay? So if you have uh, two angles in the same segment coming from the same arc or the same chord, then they will be equal. So if I was to draw a third one now, um, let's draw, draw it here, here, then this, 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 they will all be the same. So if this is 40 degrees, that will be 40 degrees, that will be 40 degrees. If I draw another one here, that will also be 40 degrees. Angles in the same segment are equal. Circle theorem number four, the cyclic quadrilateral. Very, very important to note that the quadrilateral, the vertices, the corners, the ends, must touch every single part of it, must touch the circumference of a circle. Otherwise, you cannot apply this rule. And the cyclic quadrilateral is that opposite angles of a cyclic quadrilateral are equal to 180 degrees. So the, this angle here and this angle here, they will add up to 180. This angle and this angle will add up to 180. And of course, we know that the angles in the interior angles in a quadrilateral all equal to 360. So for example, if this angle here was 50 degrees, then to find this angle, you do 180, take away 50 degrees, which is 130 degrees. On to circle theorem number five, uh, the angle between a radius and a tangent is 90 degrees. Now, a tangent is something I didn't explain at the beginning, so I will explain it now. A tangent is quite specific. It touches the circle at one point, and it meets that radius, and they make a perpendicular between them. A perpendicular meaning 90 degree angle. Now, I will quickly show you what is a tangent um, in more detail, 
by showing you this example. Hopefully you can see this, I'm not in the way. So here, if I draw a line, this is not the tangent to a circle because it cuts through the circle and it cuts again. So that's not a tangent. Nor is that a tangent because it doesn't touch the circle. A tangent is something that comes and touches the circle once and it continues on throughout. So this is also the tangent to a circle. Circle theorem six and seven, I will explain them in one setting here. So if you have um, two tangents to a circle from a point outside the circle and they meet at two points of the circle, then those two lines are exactly the same. Circle theorem number seven, which is related closely to the circle theorem number six that you've just seen, is if I were to draw a radius here, and then I have a line that extends from the center of the circle to that point outside the circle, then these two triangles will be congruent, exactly the same. Why? They make that 90 degree, both of them, with the tangent and the radius, and they have the same radius here, so these are the same length. They have this tangent, which is equal from circle theorem number six, and they have a shared hypotenuse. The hypotenuse being opposite the right angle. So therefore, these two triangles are congruent. And finally, on to our final theorem, circle theorem number eight, alternate segment theorem. Often students find this one um, most difficult to remember. So let's go through it. You have a tangent to the circle. The tangent does not meet with a radius here. It meets a chord, okay? Now, the tangent and the chord, they make an angle between them. From that same chord, if you have two other lines that go and meet in the alternate segment, remember this is one segment and this is the other segment, so they go and meet in the alternate segment from the same chord, then what we say is that this angle here, the tangent and the chord, make in this segment is equal to the angle that is made in the alternate segment. So remember that. Now you can often see a triangle here, but just remember that this triangle has to be connected to, with the chord. So in a nutshell, the angle here is equal to this angle that is made from that chord at the circumference. And for that very same reason, you can see this um, part of the tangent here, and this is also another chord of this circle. Therefore, this angle here will be equal to that angle there because the same rule applies. And one final one for the higher level students um, is if you have a chord on a circle and a radius meets the chord, then if the angle between them, and this is something you have to prove, if the angle between them is 90 degrees, then the radius bisects the chord and therefore these two lines are exactly the same length. And for the same reason, if you're given this and then you're told that these two lines are exactly the same, then because of that, this is also proof that you have a 90 degree angle there. So these are the circle theorems. I hope you've understood them. Please write them down. In the next lesson, we are going to look at applying these circle theorems to some GCSE questions. So I'll see you in the next video.